So now that that is done, we can take a look at a, an exercise here. We will be required to analyze malicious traffic and the PCAP file will contain HTTPS data or HTTP uh, data that's been secured with a TLS certificate and will be required to decrypt it and essentially identify the type of malware that was used to infect one of the systems on the network. So uh, this exercise file is uh, again, part of the GitHub repository that I highlighted within these slides. And uh, I'll, I'll just navigate to the GitHub repository now. So I'm currently on the GitHub repository and this is the zip file that you want to download. It's called Wireshark Tutorial on Decrypting HTTPS uh, SSL or TLS traffic. It's a zip file. The password for the zip file is infected. I've already downloaded this on my desktop. So I'll just navigate there, desktop, and uh, you can see we have it here. So I'm gonna extract it. Uh, I'll just say, I'll use the archive manager, extract to my current working directory and the password is infected. And I'll hit enter, extraction is done and you'll be provided with the actual uh, Wireshark tutorial keys. This, this is the SSL encryption keys uh, in order to decrypt the SSL traffic. These keys were captured during a man in the middle attack that was performed due, uh, you know, when this traffic was being captured. And uh, this is the actual PCAP file. So we can open it up with Wireshark. You do not require Wireshark. You do not require, uh, you're not required to run Wireshark with pseudo privileges to analyze PCAP files. That's only relevant when you're capturing packets. So I'll open it up with Wireshark here. And uh, yeah, so this is the data there. Now, because we're running this through our current user profile, uh, we are going to head over into uh, preferences and we're just going to add those columns that we added to the root uh, to, to the actual root user profile. So that's going to be the source and destination, uh, I, the source and destination port. So I'm just going to do that right now. All right, so I've added the columns and set out the layout to display the panes as follows as we did previously. And uh, you can see that uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to align this, uh, the source and destination columns. I'm just going to align them in the center there and we can see what's going on. I'm, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. Uh, so I'll just uh, zoom in so we can actually see what's going on. All right. So the objective here is to decrypt, um, is to essentially decrypt uh, communication between a particular system on this network. As I said, I don't know anything about this network. You can see it's on a different subnet. This is what I was actually talking to you about. So as a uh, as an individual who works in a blue team, this is the type of scenario you'll be presented with, whereby you're given a PCAP file and you're told to analyze it and identify the infection and essentially what happened. All right, so we can use a filter here. That's quite useful. We can say TLS handshake and uh, the type of the handshake. So handshake uh, dot type, we're gonna say uh, is equal to one. So we're looking for, you know, successful handshakes. So you can see this is the protocol TLS version 1.2. And uh, you can see that uh, this is essentially going to be encrypted. So if we say follow uh, TLS stream, uh, in this case, is that no, nothing's being displayed. I'm just going to go back to my previous filter uh, so uh, let, let me just select the handshake there. So um, TLS handshake equal one. And uh, sorry, uh, TLS dot handshake type equal one. And uh, there we are. So I'm just going to filter those packets there. And uh, you can see if I follow the TCP stream, all of that data is encrypted, right? Because there's an SSL certificate, right? Now, as I said, this uh, exercise uh, already provides you with the actual SSL keys to decrypt this traffic. So that's what is required in order to decrypt uh, HTTPS or SSL traffic. So how do we uh, decrypt this with the keys? Because we already have them, right? So in order to decrypt them, what we want to do is head over into edit and into preferences and under protocols, we're gonna search for TLS. And right away, you can see we have the pre-master secret log file name. So we can browse onto our desktop or, or where you saved the actual zip file. And you want to click on Wireshark tutorial keys log file and click on open and hit okay. All right, and uh, we can then get rid of that filter there. And if we take a look at the TLS handshake type equal one, hit enter. 
and if we follow the actual TCP stream, you can see that it's still encrypted. But uh, if we actually uh, TLS, I'm just going to say TLS, there we are, TLS handshake type equal one. And uh, I'm just going to hit enter again there to filter it. And if we take a look at the actual TLS stream now, the traffic is, uh, in this case, it looks like it's still encrypted. Uh, but yeah, I think it's actually decrypted at this point. There we are. So we can actually see the actual post requests here. So now our objective is to find out what, uh, you know, what system was infected and what malware essentially caused the infection. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, use a filter. So we're going to say http.request and uh, we are also going to say or and because we can use logical uh, you know the logical operator uh, the logical operators and I'm just going to put this in a bracket right because we're also going to be excluding a a particular IP address or a particular uh, protocol so I'm going to say HTTP request and I'm going to say or TLS dot handshake dot type which is the filter we used previously uh, equal one and uh, we're then going to say and I want you to exclude a particular protocol so SSDP we want to exclude SSDP uh, and uh, yeah so HTTP dot request uh, let me just make sure that is set correctly HTTP dot request or and uh, we can then hit enter uh, so that uh, TLS dot handshake uh, dot type equals one and I want to exclude SSDP all right, so this is going to display all the actual um, HTTP requests or the DLS handshakes, and it's going to exclude SSDP. And now from here, you can see all the actual HTTP requests, uh, and there are different types of requests. We have a GET request, POST request. However, we can see a very interesting one here. We have a GET request, and that is, if we click on it, it's requesting for a particular resource or it's downloading a resource and in this case the resource is a DLL that's very interesting right and it's called invest20.ell now to give you a bit of background as to uh, what type of malware we're dealing with in this particular case uh, a system on this network was uh, essentially infected uh, with the drydex malware all right now the drydex malware you can actually research this uh, on your own is a type of malware that affects uh, financial institutions and it's typically uh, it's it's the actual infection method is through uh, is through particular office documents more spe uh, more specifically spreadsheets with custom macros and what it does is it downloads uh, you know specific uh, tools or uh, utilities that are used to then download the final piece of the malware and in this case it looks like we have a dll here all right, now what we can do once we have identified this DLL is, um, you know, we can actually click on that there uh, and follow the actual HTTP stream, right? So if we right click on it and say follow um, HTTP stream, we can actually see what happened. So we can see that uh, this particular IP here, the source IP on the network, uh, actually, uh, you know, performed a GET request to this particular server here. And you can see it, it's downloading or it's making a GET request for this DLL. And then there's a response saying, OK, it was able to find it. And then we have this octet stream or application data contained within that packet. And this looks to be the actual DLL because we get the uh, we actually get the uh, the DOS stub here, which tells us that this program cannot be run in DOS mode. So that means this is the content of the DLL. Now, as a malware analyst or uh, as a threat hunter, you would uh, essentially need to uh, to essentially download the content of this DLL or save this uh, DLL or the content within the DLL as a DLL file and then analyze it through uh, a, a utility like, uh, for example, um, uh, you know, like virus total, for example, right? So how would we do this? Well, what we can do is we can actually export this as an object because we've already decrypted it. We can export this as an object. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on that packet there and uh, I'm just going to get rid of that there. So if we use the, pre the previous filter, that's the one there, we can click on that particular packet and we can say file export objects and we want to export an http object and we're looking for this one here so that's invest underscore 20 dot dll 
and we want to save this on our desktop as invest20.dll so it actually saves the file that was downloaded that's one of the cool things with wireshark and we can hit save all right so now that that is saved we can utilize a service like virus total to try and identify what type of malware this is all right so we can upload the actual malware there and you can see this is marked as uh, malware and the original dll is crowddry.dll and uh, you can essentially learn more about it here so you can see that this is a win32 dll uh, portable executable and you can also identify more information regarding when this uh, particular piece of malware was created all right so uh, you get information like that you can also see what dlls or win uh, win apis it imports uh, and of course you can pretty much tell that this is quite malicious because it uh, utilizes the win32 or rather the actual uh, kernel32 dll there and a few others like ws32 dll so if you're familiar with malware analysis uh, then this is typically how you'd go about doing it. So you can see that the execution parents are through an Office Open XML document. And, uh, you know, this, these are the typical file names. So you have investments.doc. So you can click on that there. And, uh, yeah, so that's typically uh, the infection method. So, you know, you can click on uh, the actual relations. And based on the number of relations, uh, you have an idea as to uh, the type of infection and what caused it. So in this case, it looks like this particular user on the network uh, was uh, essentially downloaded, uh, you know, the document. We're not really familiar or sure how they downloaded it. They probably got it through a an email. They downloaded the Excel document and, of course, opened it up with Excel and executed the macro, which then uh, made the, which essentially executed code to download this particular DLL, which would then, uh, you know, infect the system. If we take a closer look at the actual packets uh, within that particular filter that we had used previously, so uh, let me just load it up here. Uh, you can also see that uh, we have a couple of very interesting post requests being made to a uh, to this particular server IP here. And the actual source port is as follows, which is quite unusual. And that is being made to this particular IP there uh, to a file called docs.php. That is very interesting. So it looks like after the connection or after the infection, it actually connects to the C2 server, right? That is operated by the attacker. So if we say follow the TLS stream, you can see because we're able to decrypt it that indeed this is the control uh, the, the command and control server so this is going through man in the middle proxy and uh, yeah so it actually looks like that is the command and control server so we've been able to decrypt the uh, the actual https traffic or the tls traffic and identify the type of malware that caused the infection as well as what system was infected and of course, if we say, um, if we take a look at the system that uh, was infected, uh, you know, so if we uh, identify that there, let me just get rid of this filter here. Uh, and uh, you can see that this system downloaded the DLL. So that's 101101. And, you know, we say NBNS uh, and we hit enter. Uh, you can see that the name of uh, the actual host name is desktop u544aj8k so we now have a good idea as a, a threat analyst uh you know as to what system was infected and we can then you know pass on this information to the relevant uh teams uh or the relevant individuals that can essentially handle uh you know incident response and start analyzing the infected system and the scope of the uh, of the infection so uh, that is how to utilize uh, Wireshark to perform network traffic analysis. Uh, this video has been going on for quite a while, uh, but I'll probably be making more videos on this. We will be taking a look at even more exercises, uh, you know, in regards to identifying uh, malicious or uh, unusual activity on a network, identifying the infected system, uh, you know, uh, identifying what type of malware uh, was used, or what systems it affected, the command and control server, so on and so forth. All right, so that concludes the practical demonstration side of this video, and this is where we're going to leave it. Uh, as I said, I will be making more videos on this. Uh, for now, we're now going to move on to our next video. So in the next video, we're going to be taking a look at how to uh, essentially uh, utilize Snort for intrusion detection. 
So I'll be seeing you in the next video. I just want to take a couple of moments to thank our Patreons. Thank you, Michael Hubbard, Dustin Umpress, Jerry Speds, Doozy, Sid Saab, Ryan Carr, Shamir Douglas, Jojo Bibi, Balangos, Kushkev, RS, Nino Buikov, and David Bricker. You guys are really awesome. Thank you very much for supporting us. And you guys make these types of videos possible. So we really appreciate it. And we look forward to producing even more high quality content.